Hey friends, this is Quest and Current, and today we're going to take a look at USB C, or more specifically, USB C chargers, cables, and the reason why the new EU legislation for USB C cables may be destined to fail. But let's first start with USB C chargers and the reason why they are so common nowadays. And for my Uh, applications at least, I know that I by now have many devices using USB-C to charge. For example, this little vacuum cleaner uses a little USB-C socket to charge. My really tiny USB hot plate uses USB-C with power negotiation and power delivery standard to be able to heat up electronic components. My phone has been with USB-C for a while now and There are even are different variants of charging and discharging for, for this phone, for example. And there are many more, like my bicycle charging light, or my bicycle lights, and <coughs> my laptop, and my power bank. So all of them features u feature USB-C um, as an input-output uh, to charge, discharge, or transmit data. The thing is that... While it is quite easy to know that, for example, my laptop uses 20 volts for charging at 3 amps of current, so 60 watts in total, and my phone, for example, charges with 5 volts at 2 amps, it is really difficult to find the correct cable for that. And what you can see here on the, on the left-hand side are three chargers that, that I'm, I'm using regularly, and all three of them, for example, this one says PD, power delivery, 65 watts. So we know that this is a 65 watt charger. Uh, this Legion type charger, if I can get it in focus and in shot, says in a bit of a weird way, 135 watts. So I know that it's a 135 watt charger. And this quite prominently states 20 watt fast charge. So it's a 20 watt charger. And even though I don't know what the voltage and current this, this device can deliver is yet, I at least know practically what, what they can do, uh, even though I've read nothing about them and don't know if they are interchangeable or not. If I want to know more, then basically all of those devices, let's see if this focuses, yes it does, say, okay, this USB-C outlet is capable of handling 5, 9, 12, 15 wo volts at 3 amps max, and also 20 volts at 6.75 amps max, which results in the 135 watt rating. Um, and even though that's not an original charger in any way, I now know that this charger, for example, charges my phone, this charger charges my laptop, it can be used to charge a vacuum cleaner or any other device I've just shown you. The problem is that if I have to connect uh, my di device to this charger, I have to use a cable and Generally, I have a lot of cables. I've picked three of them because those are the most random ones I found. But there are more cases to come. So this cable features just a branding of the manufacturer called XG Mat, but nothing else. So both of the connectors are actually blank besides the manufacturer logo. It is pretty similar with this cable. It just says no or no or whatever with the manufacturer name on top of it. And the th third cable is pretty much identical. So which cable do I use? Or are actually all of them identical? So can I use any of those cables to charge, for example, my laptop? The answer is no. So that's a really big problem. And that's what the EU regu regulation may be destined to, to rule and, and to where the problem may be. Because even though now all phones, for example, and by next year all laptops have to feature this USB-C connector, it is not defined what the USB-C connector itself can actually do. So the cable can transmit data or not, transmit data fast with USB-2 standards, USB-3 standard, USB-4 standard. It can charge slowly, quickly with different voltages and different currents, but there is no way of actually getting that out of the cable without trying a bunch and then just hoping for the best. And so you know that I'm not actually trash talking, I'm going to show you uh, with all three of them that I have. 
uh, with this easy little cable tester uh, that tests just USB-C cables. And let's connect the small blue one and it's going to measure for a second or two and then tell us, okay, uh, this is a USB 2 cable, so that's why it's 0.48 gigabits per second or 480 megabits per second. And the charging power is a maximum of 10 watts, which the, this cable means the cable is not new, so the cable health is not 100%. The resistance has grown because I've plugged and unplugged it. The uh, contact plating, most certainly gold, has worn off. So it's not capable of handling the full current anymore due to the internal resistance. Theoretically, all cables should be able to handle 20 volts at 3 amps, which means 60 watts, but practically not all of them can. And what we can also see here, this is a view, a schematical view of the USB connector uh, from the front. So um, if you imagine it like this and take a look inside, then you can see which pins are connected and which one are not. And with this connector and with this cable, you can see that there are only some of them connected. And if we take a look into the details section of this cable, we can see that it's actually Webus and ground for power supply, CC2 for the power negotiation between your phone uh, or other device and your power supply, D plus and D minus for USB 2 and the shield to shield the data transmission. The available options are USB 1 and 2. And the VBUS resistance is at 160 milliohms, which is slightly increased, and therefore the cable cannot handle the full charging current anymore. So this cable cannot be used to charge my laptop, even though it looks quite nice and it, it also feels quite rigid. So by first on first glance, you should be able to, to use it. But if you try and, and you've actually read on, on the charger itself, okay, that's a 65 watt charger and my laptop draws, I don't know. 60 watts, I should be able to use this cable. Haha, <laughs> no, you're not, but you're never going to find out why. And with this cable, for example, this is quite a good cable. We can see that the data speed is at 40 gigabits per second and the charging power is at 250 watts, nominal 240 watts. So the cable before was 10 watts, this one is 250. That's not even close. The cables themselves don't feature any markings at all. You don't see that, you don't hear that, you, you have just no way of finding that out without having a cable tester or some useful standard that actually says this cable can be used for this amount or for this amount of current, this, this voltage, this power rating, whatever. But even though there is um, a labeling like that from the official uh, USB-IF, that's not practically used that often. And the third cable that just says no um, from Kabelkraft is actually even more interesting because it says it is a USB 2 cable with charging power of 100 watt nominally. So the cable itself actually has some electronics inside that can tell the devices, hey, I'm this kind of cable, I'm at this length. Practically, the cable cannot do USB 2 speeds. That's due to the fact that the pins required for data transmission are actually not existing in this cable. This cable is for charging only. It is advertised as a charging only cable and you will never be able to transmit any kind of data with it. Even though, like I just said, the cable itself, if we take a look at the e-marker, the integrated electronics, it says it can do USB 2. That's due to the missing no USB option in the standard. And that's where a, an additional interesting fact comes up because devices connected with this cable can actually see, okay, I'm connected with the data connection to, I don't know, to my laptop, from my phone to my laptop, from my laptop to I don't know what, and they will try to transmit data, but are actually not able to. So with this in mind, we now know that the EU regulation is really nice because all of those devices that I've just shown you have the same kind of connector for charging. But practically speaking, having the same connector doesn't mean that they're actually able to charge. And without having some standardized cables, without having some standardized cable testing, cable requirements and cable definitions, we are not able to actually, actually standardize in any way. And it's going to lead to a lot of confusion for many people. With this, I thank you for your attention. If you have any questions in mind, just put them in the comments below um, or just directly write me a message. Thanks.